we're back. More Shannara with Melarune. The last Shannara with Melarune. You might say. Because it is. So might isn't really a issue, but... Anyway, where we left off, uh, we just got trapped by some traps. So, time to do some stuff. Something. Something. Alright, so let's see. We got a knife over here. Let's look at it. Dagger's golden yep, hilt in the gold. Knife. Yeah, it is. Except it, the description says it's a dagger, so that's okay. <laughs> so the, the dagger's golden hilt and the gold inlay on its sheath hint at the weapon's value. Let's see, get some armor. The full plate armor still gleams with after, after centuries of neglect. It is obviously the armor of a king. Porch that we can't actually see. Uh, but it's apparently of a warrior in armor, probably uh, depicting one of the kings who are entombed in these halls. One of the case over here displays a collection of unusual knives, another painting, um, and you wonder if these treasures once came from the beautiful castle depicted in this painting. It seems unlikely that any one castle, however impressive, could be that wealthy, though. Um, there's a chest. It's richly furnished. Um, you curious as to what lies under it? Mm, there's a trunk. Dust. It has handles so that it can be used to carry... Uh, this large chest has handles so that it can be used to carry valuables from place to place. Okay, that felt like it was worded weird for a second. Perhaps it holds costly clothing of silk or velvet. You don't know until you open it. Ooh, rare cloth. The plush velveteen cloth looks brand new, although it must, in fact, be ancient. Great magic must have been used to preserve it through the centuries it has been lying here. Mothballs? A serving bowl full of mothballs. Um, covered golden pot may once have been used to serve rare and delicate dishes to royalty. I think gold would actually be horrible to eat from, though, personally. <laughs> Probably. I mean, maybe like a gold platter that then the actual dishes are on, that are made of, you know, porcelain or whatever. Um, this helmet looks almost crude in comparison to the magnificent Helm of Command. It was probably a favorite of some ancient king. Some great axes that are more ceremonial than practical, most likely. Um, there's a golden orrery. Shows the movements of planets through the spheres. You have never seen one made of gold before. The small chest looks like it is designed to hold coins or jewelry. Um, there's a bottle that contains a rare liquid, possibly. Uh, or maybe it did. I don't know. Um, oh, there's a plain wooden cup. Strange Ooh. to find an ordinary wooden cup among such incredible treasure. It looks like something an ordinary carpenter might use. Are they saying that that's, that's the cup that... That's Jesus' cup. That's the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail? I wonder if that is like a reference to that, though. Wouldn't be surprised. Uh, oh, it's a wooden staff. Um, looks too... The carved staff looks too heavy. Why is it trying to heavy something? <laughs> anyway, well, let's move on. Well, it's looking to heavy it for practical value. Ah, yes. I don't know how that makes sense, but whatever. Your eyes tingle when you look at this helm. It practically radiates magic with its ornate design... With its ornate... Designed... Yes. And carved it's jam. This designed. Must, this must be the Gnomish Helm of Command. When you nudge Brindle and nod towards the helm, you can see that he agrees with you. Neither of you thinks that you should point out the helm to geek it just yet. Let's look at the I treasury. What could go wrong? <laughs> This chamber is a treasure trove of riches almost beyond your imagining. The chamber itself is a curiosity in these dark halls. It appears to be a replica of some long-gone noble's counting room. Carefully and attractively arranged treasures are incredibly tempting. Uh, let's push on it. The cage rocks a little when you push against it, but you aren't strong enough to lift it by yourself. Brendel, cage, lift. I think we can lift this enough that the gnome can get out. If he can get that spear, we can try to lever this cage up. You and Brindle work together to lift the cage about a foot. Geeka barely scrapes through the gap. Or we drop it on him halfway through, and he's crushed. All right. Anyway. Now what Geeka do? Um. Watch your steps. For, watch your step for traps. All right. Geeka not stupid. Geeka not get caught again. Please, yeah, you, you say that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I like how it has, like, claws and stuff. It's it's funny because knowing the books, 
everything is like basically all of the races are originated from humans except the, well, with the exception of elves so it's funny they have like claws and these big like weird ears like all kind of gnomish like some gnomes you know not like D&D &D gnomes exactly I don't think though but whatever alright well uh, look we need you to get us you need, we need you to bring us the spear from over there alright pretty dangerous Many traps. What you give me? Look, just help us get out of here, alright? I'm not saying please to you, because you're a jerk, even though the text right there says it, but that's not what I'm saying. You prisoners again. All the time prisoners. Twelve years a slave. Gika have talk. Gika very powerful. Now Gika need helm of command. Yeah, good for Gika, alright? Now shut up and help us get out of here. You in you no can position get out to of bargain. Here. Time to die, Dr. Jones. Well, you can have it if you get us out of here. Oh, you no have helm. Do you see helm? I like how he makes that jump, because it's like, well, we know it's somewhere in this place. Like, the... Yes, it's helm of command. Geeka become great leader. Geeka command everyone. I actually think it would have been funny if he picks up, like, the other stupid helmet. Uh, that would be pretty hilarious. Uh, your arms got blasted off, and then you got blasted to death. Ha uh... The falling helm sets off yet another trap, opening a large hole on the floor. Bad way to die, even for a gnome, but I'm still super excited and glad that he's dead. And thus, right. Melarune has no more lines. Now it's time to push the cage. Could shove this thing a bit. Together, you and Brindle have shoved the cage forward far enough that part of the hole is now under the cage. Ironically, the cage itself protected you from the falling weights, swinging sides, and other traps you set off in the process. <laughs> I find it it's funny, nice. actually, that they seem to imply there's that many traps. Uh, it's like, really? It's like, in the f five to ten feet we walked, there were that many things? Yep. Alright, so we're going to tie the rope here. You tie the rope to the crossbar and down through the hole in the floor. Uh, the rope doesn't quite reach the floor below, but it's probably close enough for you and Brindle to jump the remaining distance safely. Alright, so we're going to go down. You expect me to climb down that? Um, I'm not reading that. I'm going to do it in the voice of Jack. Yeah, I just... Uh, you could die here in the cage if you want, uh, but I'm not going to do that, so... I think that's really your only choice, besides dying in the cage. Well, you go first, and don't expect me to keep my eyes open. If you'd like, you can read this, Melarune. <laughs> you climb down the rope, jumping the last eight feet to the floor below. Brendel is unused to climbing, however. He loses his grip halfway down and falls to the floor before you can help him. You don't like the sound of the crunch as Brendel lands on his arm. Trapdoor snaps shut behind you and Brendel, taking your rope with it. Oh hey, it's the Horn of Gondor. Ah, uh, it is. Um, actually, wait, if the thing snaps shut, wouldn't, like, wouldn't it, like, cut the rope, maybe? I mean, it wouldn't take it with it. It's the way they worded there, it sounds like it, like, slurps it up like it's a ramen noodle or something. Spaghetti noodle or whatever. Ramen noodle. <laughs> I had some earlier. That's why ramen came... That's why I said ramen instead of spaghetti first. Um, you find yourselves at the base of an immense grim idol. Now which way do we go? Um, oh, cool. I hear a voice in my head. You're going crazy. Um, wasn't there a voice before? I can't remember if we were doing something for it. Uh, sure. Eh, well, whatever. Uh... Anyway, it says go through the idol's eye or whatever. <laughs> oh, I don't wanna. The huge head seems almost alive. The yard-wide eyes seem to stare at you hungrily. <sighs> ba All right. Uh, yes. nah, nah, nah. Just gonna move chest. To... You might have Explode to do the horn of Gondor. Let's take it. You can 
considerably more to worry about than wealth. You don't really need to steal the offerings. Um, remove the chest with the temple. That's not... Well, throw the Warhammer at the idol, if you say so. There you are. Remember, does it show us the thing? Monsters. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we have to do this first. I love that now we suddenly have, like, zombies. Okay. Oh, this is thriller. Play. Thriller. Jack, Jack, this is Thriller, Thriller Night. Thriller, Thriller. Those are the lyrics, right? It's just Thriller, Thriller over and over again. Yeah, for about 16, um, 17 minutes. Okay, yeah, so we can't, like... I thought I was wondering if I could have him, like, invoke the hammer or something, because apparently it gave me the option to invoke it when I was going to throw it at the thing. I do like how uh, he's using both hands, by the way. <laughs> Considering, like, we're pretty sure his, like, arm broke. Alright, this is gonna take forever. There you go. Yeah, Brindle took out, like, what, 40 to 50% of the thing's total health there? Yeah, there we go. He vanquished the monster. Plural, but he gets in one last powerful swipe at Brindle's hurt arm before it goes down. Oh. Fearing further assault, you and Brindle quickly block the doors with the piles of treasure, being careful not to touch any of the poisoned items with your hands. How do we know anything's poisoned when we weren't even told this? I know it because I've read the books. But, you know, whatever. Idle. Time to climb it. Alright. You go ahead, Jack. I think my arm's broken. I'll stay here and keep the monsters off your back. Cool. Jack. If a monster jumped on your back, would you get it off? Um, you just said that you'd do it for me, right? Yeah, so if you notice when we throw the hammer that or when we threw the hammer it broke that uh eye. So um I'll go ahead and let you take this uh, again, because you know you have no more lines for like people, I don't <clears> think. <throat> <clears throat> do you. Dun 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 <laughs> You climb up the statue and into the eye of the idol. You wave down at Brendel. Brendel smiles and waves his good arm in a gesture of farewell. You hope, with all your heart, this is not your last sight of your friend and companion. This uh, is as CNN. It, as it was with all your other companions so far. <laughs> as foretold by prophecy. You travel through this narrow cave passage, crawling most of the way, shivering from more than just the cold. You are all alone. That sucks. Existential dread is setting in. That's kind of dread. At last, you come to a cold, dark chamber that seems strangely familiar, as if it were something once seen in a nightmare. Uh, you seem to have caught me at a bad time. You find yourself trembling uncontrollably as you approach your enemy. This is the creature who has brought the world to the brink of destruction four times, and slaughtered millions of beings in his merciless pursuit of power. This is the Warlock Lord, Brona, defier of death, destroyer of all. I think Thousands is actually probably more appropriate for this setting. I never got the feeling there were millions of people in the world during, during like any of the books, really. Maybe some of the like newer-ish ones, but like the original, uh, what would you call like seven books? Would you say? I never yeah, got that impression. Sure. Like maybe maybe a, a, a few hundred thousand, but like this is implying that like one city has millions of people, like New well, York size or something. Would you consider a being any life? Perhaps he killed a orchard. Mm, got a point, yeah. I guess yeah. he could have killed like a bunch of bugs. Yeah. And fear the birds. warlock lord of Brona, destroyer of mosquitoes, the scourge of caterpillars. Actually, destroyer of mosquitoes. I think everybody would actually like him for that. 
I like him. You feel a wave of terror freeze your soul as the voice of Bruna fills your mind. Hey, Macarena. <laughs> Yeah, because like I think that's all we see. Like we don't get any actual freaking text from. Or drop sandwiches. Well, actually, I think Skeletor actually comes to mind. Um, well, yes. For a voice. Although terror threatens to overwhelm you, somehow you find yourself slowly moving closer to Brona and the Dark Altar, He Man. <laughs> Kid, I'm a computer. And he's crazy and ancient, so of course he's going to have multiple voices here. <laughs> you hear another voice in your head. You sense it is coming from the book in front of Broda. Alright, here we go. Atu, Barada. <laughs> Claim your <laughs> inheritance of magic, Jack. Destroy Brona forever. I don't want a magic, Jack. Forever. They s their signal sucks. Forever. Forever. You continue to walk forward. Now you can smell the fetid odor of death from Brona's wraith-like countenance. Ah, oh, come on, guys. I, I showered earlier. Oh! Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. No. Magic washes over your body. The pain and terror threaten to overwhelm you. A voice cuts through your fear. Who wants a body massage? No, no, you gotta say it right, man. Who wants a body massage? Body <laughs> massage, body massage. Body <laughs> massage, body massage. Hey, it's Buzz Lightyear. Seen all your movies. Body massage. Destroy the Warlock Lord. Destroy him. So we're gonna do this, and you're gonna you're gonna see my secret save file names. <laughs> oh, so secret! Oh no, the secret revealed. Spoiler. Um, <gasps> so we're gonna save it here because there's a couple of things we can do, and want to make. And I'm gonna show. We're gonna show both endings that we can get here. I like so, the ending where the world's destroyed. We're gonna draw the sword. <clears throat> you have a pencil. You're going to draw the sword, aren't you? Ah, you take yes. hold of the hilt of the sword <laughs> of Shenanana. A surge of energy oh, flows gosh. up your arm and fills your mind. Your thoughts swirl, and darkness surrounds you. That's not good. That's fine. Or no, uh, or no, the, uh... You know what I'm doing with that, right? <laughs> Do you have any idea what I was doing with that? Come on. You, you watched SNL when it was still good, right? <laughs> it's so hard to think back that far. Dream sequence. Been like what? 15, 20 years since SNL was good? <laughs> Wayne's World, dude. Come on. Dream sequence thing. Like every time. Something or is kind of like that. I probably butchered it actually. Diddly -doo, Diddly -doo. Why did you seek the sword of Shannara? Because you told me to do it, jerk. Let's see. I believe you actually get different, like slightly different responses with all of these. We're not going to go through all of this, so I'm actually probably going to have to redo that save file. <laughs> um. Because I was the only one who could do this task. Yeah, I like that one. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Because it was my duty, alright? Was it your duty to disobey your father and run off from home? Was it your duty to bra drag Shella from her home into her death rather than go with the Leia guards? Was it your duty to bring Stenman back from the grave, damning the souls of your friends? Were all these actions merely your duty? Well, you, you told me to do <laughs> it. You said duty. Eh, eh, eh. You're a duty head. Alright. I don't believe this actually changes anything. I don't know if maybe you see things out of, like, in a different order. I, I've never really noticed. I think you do everything in the same order, like, of 
when you last saw people or whatever. You left me to die, didn't you? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah, I didn't leave you to die, Brendel. I'm coming back for you, all right? After you face Brona, do you think you can defeat the Warlock Lord so easily? Face it, you've lost all your friends. You're alone. I don't remember the uh, sword's power being being a dick. <laughs> Let's go left. Hey, what's up, Delzik, man? How you doing? Uh, many dead. Look, I did what I thought was right, alright? Alright, alright? Bad thing. Yeah, this one's definitely running long. <laughs> Telsic implies that you should have done a lot more thinking before taking the actions that killed your friends. Shut up, Telsic, you jerk. Let's keep going. Oh, ghost. Down this like super awesome graphics hallway. The graphics. Let's go to the right again. That's at least two bits of graphics. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually more than that. It's like three. I was thinking more like eight, like twelve. Twelve bits of graphics. Friend Jack, why did I have to die? Yeah, he's the only confirmed death here, so he's of course he's the only one who has the ghost voice. Uh, let's see, which one do I like? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I didn't make you die, you old bastard. Look, you uh, you chose to die to save our lives, Dobby. All right, you saved us all. Ooh. I suppose there was no other choice. Yet I cannot help but regret my death. You too are facing death, Jack. Can you do what must be done, even if death is the price? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love how the door just like magically appears as soon as I click there. All right, so here we go. This pose is really freaking creepy. That's you, dude. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I was taking a drink here. No. Oh. <laughs> Why did you? Kill me, Jack. Dude, where, where's her ghost voice? Or, well, never. Mind, I guess you already had one. <laughs> um. Mm, I had no choice. I didn't kill you. I saved you. Saved you from living. <laughs> yeah, pretty if much. If you loved me, Jack, you would have found a way to save me. You would never have let me die. Yeah, I really don't get that, like, really creepy pose where everybody else is just like, Hey man, what's up? Um, Tilsic even had a ghost axe. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Whoa, it's Alanon again! Whoa! Jack Omsford, do you believe you are a hero? By the way, this is CNN. Um... Doesn't matter. I'm gonna I'm gonna go full Keanu Reeves here. Um, forget the voice I was doing before. It doesn't matter whether or not I'm a hero. It matters only what I do. Whoa! I know kung fu. Party on, I'm or something. <laughs> now you know what your father meant about being a hero. I'm pretty sure his voice has kind of fluctuated a bit, like the whole time I'm doing this. Um. You have yet to face the final encounter, and there you must judge for yourself the foe you must confront. Check it, check it. Whoa! That's my face! In a shocking twist, it turns out Jack was Alanon all along. 
Although you feel as though you have spent hours walking through the dark visions in your mind, no time seems to have passed here in the Hall of Kings. You feel revitalized. The sword of Shannara vibrates in your hands like a living being. Gift shop yeah. on the exit. So for those who didn't read the books, what the sword really does is it kind of more makes you, like, I guess you say, like, what, face face your inner demons sort of thing, right? Or like, would you say that's it, Miller? Like, that. like, you have to kind of face up with all, like, face all your guilt and, like, anxieties and stuff that you might have, that you might have, and you have to, like, be able to kind of push past them to be able to use the sword and, like, true power. So this was kind of, I don't know. <laughs> Jack, embrace your power. Destroy the Warlock Lord and become the most powerful of all. Become the very best, like no one ever was. To train them is your real test. Wait, no, that's not right. To... What is it? To catch catch them is to your catch, real test? To catch them is your real test. To train them, to is, train them is your cause. Jack will travel across the land, searching far wide. Sh Shinaramon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to do this. Actually, toast the real final. Real final what? The okay. final what? So, there's a couple of things we can do here. So, we're going to do this one first, because it's not the right answer. We're going to attack Brona with the sword. Congratulations, you are a winner. A winner is you. Now you are the master of magic. You are the new warlock lord. You shall serve me well for a very long time. Centuries pass in darkness and despair as you grow in power and evil under the tutelage of the That's that's a capital I and an L. I know. <laughs> I know. The Lidach. The four lands become desolate and lifeless as the influence of your magic spreads even wider. Right, you become a jerk. It says ever wider. If somewhere in the back of your soul you still remember that once you were human, you keep those thoughts deeply buried. For humans are weak and have no magic. Rarely do you recall how you once loved a woman who died to save your life so that you could face Brona and the Ladach. Shella is gone, and now there is only the Ladach, your merciless master. So wait, if you would let her soul be taken by Brona... That mean that you own her soul now in this position, yes. and so then she, you get to live happily ever after. That is correct. Okay, so we're gonna un. Okay, great. So we just have to undo. Um. All right, undone. All right. So the correct answer is attack the book with the sword. So <laughs> I love how it actually animates the sword swing that time, and it's like whoop, like warp, and it disappears. A maelstrom of magic swirls in a vortex around you, and is drawn away to wherever the Ladach vanished. Ladach vanished oh. from the gnomes. Look, the book is back, actually. Hey, what, where's my magic? Disappear! <laughs> and then the book isn't the there vanish. Alright. You collapse. Something seems to be carrying you through a dark and disturbing nightmare. Perhaps it was that gas station sushi you had on the way in. With the passing of dark magic from the Hall of Kings, you find yourself curiously drained of energy. And it feels as though a part of your soul has left with the evil book that was the source of Rhoda's magic. In a shocking turn of events, it turns out your journal was Brona's Book of Magic. Fortunately, <laughs> Brona's destruction is felt by all of his monstrous creatures, and they quickly desert the hall. Alanon 
finds you as you lie half-conscious beside the foul altar, and you remember a little of the long journey that takes you back to Tirsus. Actually, what's funny is the journey isn't quite as long coming from here to Tirsus as it would be from uh, a number of other things, because we kind of made a circle in our travels, almost. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not as far as things that are farther away from Tirsus. <laughs> Whoa! Check out those graphics. Falcor! I actually don't know what like town that was supposed to be there where there's like those two little rectangles on the ground. <laughs> you look much better now, Jack. It is good to see you up again. So, uh... Now that I have gone through all of this, I realize that talking like someone from Jersey is just an awful and horrible thing to do. So, um... What happened at the Hall of Kings when I attacked the book? The Ildatch has gone, and with it, all its magic within and without. Brona was only a figment, a feeble ghost. Without the magic of the Ildatch, he could not remain in this world. He faded from the existence forever, much like he did before in the Sword of Shannara, but this game decided to kind of ignore that, for the purposes of its plot. So, why didn't you tell me that the real enemy was the book? In the beginning, I did not know of the Ildatch. Even the Shade of Bremen was unaware at first of the book's influence. The Ildatch was watching you from the moment you saw Brona in the mirror, and seeking to use you. Every act of magic you performed, every magical item you held, strengthened its power over you. It could read your very thoughts. Uh oh. I like how they seem good. to imply that like everything magical is tied back to that book when it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it knows what you did at night, thinking of Shella. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if I had warned you that the Ildatch was the true enemy, it would have known you could not be controlled and would have destroyed you. You judged well the situation in the Hall of Kings, except that one time before you reloaded, um, and before the Ildatch could react, it was forced to flee. So what happened to the book? Its flight required an incredible amount of power. It will not return to this world for a long time, such as around the time of Wish Song of Shannara. Um, but your grandkids will worry about that. Um, it will not... <laughs> But when it does return, it will take more than the Sword of Shannara to destroy it entirely. Much like, you know, the Wish Song. <laughs> Just go read that book. <laughs> so what was wrong with me after the Eldatch disappeared? Well, as could have been kind of inferred from what I was saying before, you were using magic from the beginning of this adventure, and it had become a part of you. When the Eldatch vanished, it took all the magic that was within you. If you were not as strong as you are, the loss would have destroyed you. It took a good deal of my magic to help you recover. Friends are coming now to witness the return of the Sword of Shannara to the vault, Sword Vault, uh, where it will remain as a symbol of freedom. What's up, everybody? And man, Balinor looks awkward. Um, <laughs> good to see you up and around. You looked pretty bad for a while. I'm glad to see you. Thought we wouldn't make it, huh? Wouldn't miss this for the world. And there's Telsec looking all weird from behind again. Good work. In quotations, because Telsec doesn't roll like that. Yep. I'm glad you came here. <laughs> this has already run oh. long enough, so I'm skipping as much as I can. <laughs> Telsec happy, in quotations. Everybody's stuff has been in quotations. Just Telsec's. Um, Telsec is yeah. very sarcastic. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Again, the Forlands owe the Almsford family a debt of gratitude that can never be fully repaid. I give you my thanks and the gratitude of all the people of Tersis for confronting the Warlock Lord and destroying him forever. Um, have you had any more trouble in Tersis? Not since you dispelled the barrier around the Sword Vault. That's what summoned the walking corpses. So, what's happened since I've been gone? I sent the Border Legion <clears throat> I sent the Border Legion of Tersis to aid Leia and Shady Vale. Then I sent word to Eventine and we prepared our armies and this is slipping. To march on the Hall of Kings and bring the war to Brona directly. Fortunately, you succeeded you succeeded in your mission and our armies were un <laughs> and our yeah, armies yeah, were un yeah. and our armies were unnecessary. <laughs> Uh, so what's the word from the south? 
Minion Leia is almost fully recovered from the effects of the poison. Leia was besieged soon after you left, but our Border Legion drove off the monsters. Shady Vale suffered damage, but there were few deaths thanks to your father. Uh, thank you for this. You're most welcome, Jack Olmsford. Oh, that was just terrible. Um, crap. Who, who was doing this guy's voice? Uh, I think remember. you were? Oh, I remember. <laughs> I forgot he showed up here. Um, oh, yes, it was me. He He's like Bremen, but like on whatever the opposite of steroids would be. <laughs> uh, he's Cheetos, on, Mountain Dew? He's on some downers. Cheetos and Mountain Dew. Well, no, because I was saying, like, well, maybe steroids it's is the right. exact opposite Whatever. of steroids. Okay, yeah, never mind. Um, yeah, he's basically like, he's basically like uh, Brindle. I wish to thank you for bringing peace between the trolls and my people. It would have been a bloody and meaningless war. I also owe you the life of my youngest son, Ain. Here he is, you can kill him whenever you like. Your name is honored in Arborlon, Jack Almsford, even though it will never be mentioned in any of the books because you were invented for this game and didn't exist in the books that have already come out and stuff. So, eh, let's do this one. So, did you know that Davio died with great honor? I mourn the loss of the gentle scholar Davio. He was valiant, and his deeds will be written into the history books he so loved. But I'm really going to miss him cleaning my stuff. For an old guy, he was really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so why are you here? I came to meet with Balinor and discuss the war against Brona. When word came that the Warlock Lord was defeated, my scouts accompanied Alanon, you and your friends back to Tirsis while you were unconscious. <laughs> it doesn't Balinor look weird. Um, oh, yeah, so we needed to... Uh, hmm. I got it. <laughs> the shifter never really died. <laughs> so, how did you enjoy your adventure, Jack? I think I could do a better father voice for him. Okay, fine. Go for it. Um, okay. Father, what are you doing here? And why did you sound like the shifter just now? <laughs> Balinor sent word of what happened to you, and so I came to tears as quickly <laughs> as I could to be sure you were all right. Of course. I think I've had That's enough adventures for right now. Wait, what? It's his mustache. He doesn't have a mustache. Does it look like he has oh, a mustache to you? A little bit. Oh, I guess maybe that's just the outline of his top lip. That was like a really tiny little thin mustache. Oh. Yeah, I think it's just outline. <laughs> Still gonna think it's a tiny little oh, mustache. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Enough to last a lifetime, I hope. May the sword of Shinara never be needed again. Oh, that's it, apparently. Hmm. <clears throat> Jack, now is the time to place the Sword of Shinar back into its vault. This is CNN. <laughs> Can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. It's just like, bloop, and it's over there. Oh, hey, Panamon Creel's there, but he hasn't said anything. Once more of the Sword of Shinara. Or, wait, no. <coughs> Once more of the Sword of Shinara stands as a symbol of freedom. Freedom! As the inscription upon the vault says. In case of emergency, break glass. <laughs> Yeah, we're just going to go with that. No, seriously, in case of emergency, break glass. In case of emergency, break glass. <laughs> Let's sit up there long enough, I think people will be able to read it if they want. <laughs> well, they can pause it. Alright. Um, I'll let you go ahead and send us off. You wish that Shella could be here with you. It seems somehow unfair that one so beautiful and full of life should have died so you could complete your selfish quest. You had to stand before her father to tell him the sad news. You are no longer the boy who left home, rather than face an argument with his, his father. <laughs> his father. 
From your first meeting with Eladon, when you started your journey alone, you have grown to become a leader of men. You are hailed everywhere as a hero, but you have also learned the terrible sacrifices that a hero must make. Luna's evil is vanquished from the land forever. The Ladach has vanished, though none can guess when its evils may surface again. <laughs> I do like how they're like, so Brona's evil is vanquished forever, but the Ildatch, man, now the its evil can come back at any time. Your journey has been a long and perilous one, but now you are home in Shady Vale at last. You pass Denman's book into Alanon's keeping and vow never to use your father's elf stones or to be tempted by the power of magic again. In time, the peaceful life in Shady Vale eases some of your pain, although you never again return to the innocent boy you once were. The End. The end. <laughs> All right. And, oh, I guess that's... <laughs> okay. Undo everything you've just done. Um... Undo. <laughs> nice. Um, Throw the watering can at him. All right. Or oil so... can, whatever that is. Oh yeah, I should totally do that. Give the oil to Drona. <laughs> Drona looks the oil over but says nothing. Uh, Die, mortal! mortal is something. Drona needs to sear the skin from your body. The pain is excruciating, and yet you just teleport back to here. Okay, so if you give him the book. <laughs> All right, that was funny. Um, oh yeah, let's 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 try that. Give the book to Rona. Rona looks the book over, but says nothing. <laughs> Die, mortal! Um, the spell seems to steer the skin your body. The pain is excruciating. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, like okay, like it's broken now. Okay. Uh, give the sword to Rona. Okay. Attack. Attack Rona with the That's sword. Coffee, Rona sidesteps and attack the attack. Die, mortal! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so okay, I guess it's just gonna be dark now. Wait, light the lantern. There's already plenty of light here. <laughs> Die, mortal! Uh, you find yourself around by darkness. Dark spirits that live in the Hall of Kings since your helplessness and destroy, destroy you utterly. Okay. Um, oh, that was funny. So it gives you a few chances. Apparently, it like goes dark. Okay, that was kind of funny. Fun way to end it there. Uh, wait, food. Eat. You take a surreptitious nibble. <laughs> Die, mortal! Oh, man, this is great. Um, man, I don't know why it gave us so many opportunities there. Um, tinderbox. Show the tinderbox to Bruna. Bruna looks the tinderbox over, but says nothing. <laughs> Die, mortal! Okay. <laughs> All right, so thanks for watching. Well, the whole this, point of um, this adventure is because Brona wanted your tinderbox that badly. Yep. Um, you want the keys? <laughs> want to go yeah, fishing, Brona? Cut Brona with a knife. He sidesteps the attack. Um, I think it'd be hilarious if you could use like, let's see, you can you use the uh, like the ritual dagger? <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, yeah, no. Let's just let's uh, give it to him. Makes the ritual dagger over, but says nothing. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I know this video went a lot longer. Um, we were so close to the end, I just didn't want to. I'll split it up, especially once we got to the end stuff. It's like, oh, like who's gonna come back to watch the video of just us doing the wrap up stuff at the end? Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the series. Um, and if you do like the video, don't forget to take that like button. If you didn't check, take a look at everything else there, like if you just found the channel and stuff, go back through the uh, the rest of the videos there. This is real. Um, it's kind of a fun game if you're a fan of the series. So. Um, don't forget to tick that like button there as well. And do remember what, Millie? Uh, there is no IRL. Yep, just AFKs. And we'll see just you next asks. time that Amo plays something. Um, maybe with Melarune, maybe without. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so we'll play stuff. And that's kind of that's what the channel's all about. Amo plays stuff, so... Well, I'm like um, an evil spirit. Once you invite me in, I never leave. Yeah, so we'll probably do some more stuff with Melarune. Um, maybe some other multiplayer stuff, or maybe he'll just sit in with some other single-player stuff down the road as well. Um, but yeah, thanks as always, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it, and you have a good one. See ya. Peace out.